Hello, me, Tina here. How's everyone doing? Well, what if I tell you that the aliens may show up here in just a few years? Mm. How about if I ask you this question? Do you know the origin of the Earth? Or do you know what's going to happen to the Earth? I mean, amongst this chaos that's going on right now in the next five to 10 years. Well, I have someone who's going to be telling you all about this. But before I introduce him to you, I just want to share a little bit about him. He is an author of this book called The, the Origin of the Our Cosmic. Hey, look at the book he's showing. It's beautiful, isn't it? Check this out. It's on Amazon.com right now, in paperback, in Kindle. And his intention of this book is about raising an awareness and consciousness. All right, this is beautiful intention here. So let's welcome Ismail Perez. Ismail, hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you for having me here. Oh, well, thank you for being here and sharing your gift and your knowledge to everyone here. I just have to warn some of you, you gotta be quite open-minded about this, what he's gonna share. But let me tell you, the end of this video is gonna be quite fascinating and enlightened, all right? So, all right, Ismail, what do you got to share with us? Tell us about the origin of this cosmic and the earth. Cause I know, I don't think anyone really know about it really. And we always kept question about that, right? Was in the cosmos. We originated in the highest levels of our dimensional planes of reality. In fact, the human race on this planet was seeded by other advanced races that contributed their DNA in order to make a super race. So in our original makeup, we were known as a 12 strand DNA Terranusian race. And the whole purpose of this was to create a super race that would act as guardians, not only of this universe, but of the entire multiverse. So in the beginning, there was just pure consciousness and an immeasurable amount of energy that was concentrated in its totality. And that totality has always existed without beginning or end. We could call that prime creator source. Now, according to the scientific community through the fields of quantum physics, that is equivalent to what they call base reality. Now, pure consciousness in an effort to explore more of itself decided to branch off or break off into pieces of itself. So at first broke off into seven pieces and those seven aspects of itself became the seven super universes. Furthermore, those seven super universes also broke off into smaller minor pieces. Um, and then those smaller minor pieces became known as cosmic major sectors. But bear in mind that each piece contains the whole according to the holographic concept of reality. Um, so so in, in essence, everything's interconnected by virtue of being part of that one infinite creator source. So in addition to the 10 mi uh, major cosmic sectors, they were further divided into minor cosmic sectors. And then finally, those minor cosmic sectors were divided into what we call local universes. And now through the, through the scientific avenues of quantum physics, super string theory, M theory, and unified field theory, there is so much scientific evidence to support the concept that we do live in a multiverse. Mm -hmm. So now we're shifting. We're shifting from the old paradigm that said that it was just one world, one galaxy, one universe, to the possibility that we are part of a system of many worlds, many advanced civilizations, uh, many galaxies, and now many universes. So the cosmos is actually bigger than what we were told. Mm, and okay. so according to all my research, um, the whole purpose in writing this book was to open up humanity's mind to the greater organization of cosmos and our place in the multiverse. And in so doing, uh, my intention is to bring back a multidimensional awareness, especially to those that are highly evolved souls that are incarnated as star seeds or light warriors. Your soul is uh, a volunteered soul. You actually decided to incarnate at this time to help raise the collective of the planet and also help raise the vibration of Mother Gaia in order for her to reach uh, a level of uh, existence that is now shifting into the fifth dimension. So the whole purpose of us coming down here was to help the planet and enhance the multiverse. So basically, I would like to propose that the different types of advanced space age civilization fall under five categories. So the first category is known as a planetary system. And a planetary system is a world that is 
that has discovered zero point energy technology that no longer needs fossil fuels. Um, it no longer gets its energy from plants or coil or combustion. Um, it's able to uh, go into surrounding solar systems and begin the colonization process of the, of the surrounding uh, neighborhood uh, star systems and worlds. But that's just the beginning stage of their space travel. Now, there is another advanced level beyond that called stellar. Now, a stellar civilization is what uh, scientists call a type two. A type two is a civilization that has had thousands of years of uh, zero point energy mastery. They understand interdimensional physics uh, to the level where they're able to manipulate wormholes and star stargates in order to have access to an entire galaxy. So that's why they're called stellar. Now the difference between a stellar uh, advanced civilization and an interplanetary first stage beginning civilization is that a stellar uses the power of stars. They're able to tap into the source consciousness of a sun or several suns. Whereas an interplanetary society gets their power, gets their power from a planet. So they're only tapping into their own planet's power. So that's the reason why a type two stellar has access to an entire galaxy, because that is equivalent to the amount of energy that they're able to harness. But there is more beyond a type two stellar galactic or beyond a type two stellar society. Excuse me. We have a galactic civilization that is known as a type three and a type three, according to the Kardavish scale of uh, advanced civilization uh, societies, is able to tap into the power of an entire galaxy which means that they harness the core sun or the central sun of a galaxy. Now, a type three is would be considered millions of years ahead of us, a hundred thousand years ahead of a type one and a few thousand years ahead of a stellar type two. So a type three a level civilization also has the ability. I'm sorry. Are you there? Oh, yeah, God, I think here. I lost you. I accidentally no, 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 what somebody I'm called here. me. Somebody I'm here. called me. No, no there problem. Okay, so a type three. Are you, okay, so a type three level galactic civilization are considered immortal. They have access to um, multiple galaxies, so they're they're part of what is known as an intergalactic community with other galaxies. Now, beyond a type three, we also have a type four. A type four is so advanced that they're able to harness the power of an entire universe, which consists of many many galaxies. And at that level of reality. These are beings that are able to create universes at will by just projecting it from the thoughts. So they create universes through their thought projections. And that is the reason why scientists have been detecting about 10 universes uh, coming into existence daily because of the beings that exist in a type four. Those are what we would consider creator gods. Now, beyond that, we also have one more level of, of advanced civilization known as a cosmic omniverse society the cosmic omniverse society has a lot to do with the level of intelligence that exists within the highest dimensions of all realities and these are also the dimensions that are considered eternal or infinite without beginning or end so in the case of our omniverse we could say that a type 5 is able to tap into the power of the multiverse it's able to tap into the, the central sun core of the mother universe which is encompasses all realities all dimensions and all living universes. And those are the most advanced in the cosmos. In fact, um, our original origin began in these eternal spheres in the central universe. So to give you an example of the, of, of the organization of cosmos mm -hmm. is that the earth is considered a planetary number 606 within our local universe um, out of maybe about 900 worlds. Now the earth as planetary 606 is part of a system that consists of 52 solar systems, and that is known as the Pleiadians. So we are part of the Pleiadian star systems, which is um, a conglomerate of 52 solar systems and about approximately 900 planets. Furthermore, the Pleiadian cluster that we belong to or the system with about 100,000 other systems make up a constellation council. And the constellation council in our case is known as number 70. So there is about 100 constellation councils that make up a local universe. So we belong to the constellation council of Sarayas and our constellation council with about 99 other constellation councils make up a local universe. So we belong to local universe number 84, which is also known as the local universe of Nebadon. Now our local universe of Nebadon, which is number 84, is also further organized into a greater cosmic body known as a minor cosmic sector. So there is a total of a hundred of those. And so we belong to 
the third minor cosmic sector known as Enzra. And then in turn, our, our cosmic minor sector known as Enzra is also further organized into a major cosmic sector, a total of 10. There's 10 major cosmic sectors. So we're part of the fifth major cosmic sector. And then in turn, our fifth major cosmic sector known as Splendon is also organized into a super universe segment. And in our case, we belong to the super universe of Orvin time. So there is seven super universes collectively that make up the grand central motherverse. So in terms of these higher evolved beings having access to any level of reality or any planet, because there's organization on every level, all they have to do is plug in the stargates. So in the case of our earth, they would first plug in the seven, the super universe that we belong to, which is number seven. So they plug in stargate seven. And then they plug in the major cosmic sector that we belong to, which is number five. So after seven, they plug in five because we're part of the major cosmic sector of Splendon. And then within that, they plug in number three because we're part of the third minor cosmic sector of Anzra. And then within that, they plug, they plug in universe number 84 because we belong to the local universe of Nevedon. And then within that, they plug in this, the constellation number 70. And then within that, they plug in the system of the 24, known as the Pleiadians. And then within the system of the 24, they plug in planetary 606. Or if they want to go to Venus, they they uh, plug in 607. Or if they want to go to Mars, I mean 605 for Venus. Or if they want to go to Mars, they type in 607. So that way, every planet is registered in the grand scheme of things and well organized in the, in the motherverse. So well, that's one of the main things that I reveal in the book is that we're part of a bigger organization and that everything is being monitored. Um, everything is, is um, being um, organized by, you know, the celestial architects that are operating from the, what, what I revealed earlier known as a type four space age, you know, civilization. And then even the type five in a sense, you know, are able to oversee the developments of the local universes. So everything is, you know, being guided and, and orchestrated by these wow. higher intelligences <laughs> beyond our dimension. So we're dealing with many dimensions as well. Wow, 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 wow. <clears throat> Ismail, because, you know, everyone while listening to him, um, I'm sure you just like me, would just go like, wow, how did you get all this information? That would be the question that most people would ask you, right, Isabel? I'm sure you get a lot of those questions. I do, I do. And, and <clears throat> you know, a lot of it has been my own inner understanding of things because I've always known information beyond this world. As a kid, I felt different. And also a lot of it is channeled information or downloads that I received throughout my years. And then the third aspect of me getting a lot of uh, information or knowledge was through my research to validate and confirm all the downloads that I was getting. So I got it in three ways. It's, it's an inner knowing of things, um, further downloads, and then doing the research to back it up. And that's how I was able to write this book. Since when did you start having this download, this amount? Ever since I was a kid, I, you know, perhaps 15, 16, 17. But my real awakening came at the age of 21. That's when I knew that I wasn't a human. That's when I knew that um, I was, uh, you know, a galactic here in human form. <laughs> okay. Can you share with us, like, how did you come to the point where you become aware that you're not the you're not the same as most people here or you're different you're not just human and what's the difference between the human and those in the different universes well, how do we know is... how i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions people will go what sure. about me how would i find out if i'm not human or if i'm because there's a lot of people that also feel like they're star seed or they're uh, uh aliens you know and they are <laughs> one yeah. of the indicators is is having a a feeling of missing home from the beginning, you know, from the moment you're aware of yourself, you, you realize that you don't fit in in this dimension, that you're very, you know, um, different, you know, uh, that you are, um, everything that they teach you, you feel a sense of, of in inaccuracy, you know, you don't, you don't really take it face value. So from the beginning, you question everything. Um, and then another indicator is just not fitting in. You know, not fitting in schooling in high school, uh, being the odd person. Um, another indicator is, you know, being labeled with ADD, HDHD, Asperger's, autism. So all those are different labels to describe the new breeds of uh, higher evolved intelligences that are incarnating in human form at this time. So the one of the distinctions between what I call the new soul to that of an old soul 
is the idea that the old souls have already completed the ascension process. They've already reached the highest levels of, of reality. They've graduated and they just kind of volunteer to come back because earth happens to be the most important planet. So they uh, agree to come back to help the earth, you know, uh, reach her, her, um, her ascension. And the new souls are in the 90% of the population. Those are the younger souls. Those are the souls that started their that started their evolution from the bottom up. In other words, they were first a mineral, the consciousness of a mineral, and then they graduated to the consciousness of a plant, and then they graduate to the consciousness of the animal kingdom, and then finally they graduate to the consciousness of being human. And then the next stage of that is the the uh, angelic kingdom so the old souls actually descended from the angelic kingdom so there's uh, you could also consider the star seeds angels or angels and angeless or gods and goddesses in human form uh, a lot of them which were incarnated uh, during the times of atlantis as high priests and high priestess during the times of lemuria as keepers and guardians of the stargates and a lot of them also um, have that have come from the higher dimensions of reality, like from, you know, Sirius, the Pleiadians, Lyra, Ar Arcturus, and, and even beyond the local universe. So that, that is the difference between the, an old soul that is considered a starseed and a newbie soul that um, consists of 90% of the population. So you mentioned that the old souls are, they're, they're volunteer to come down here to help yes. the earth to ascend. Correct. What's going to happen to the earth? I mean, from, um, you know, you probably have some sort of understanding or knowledge there. With the chaos we have right now, people are going to question, like, what's going to happen to the earth? Is this the reason why all these old souls are being incarnated? You know, what, what do they have to do? Things like that. Because, you know, I came across a lot of people on this, in this path, in this journey. And, and I, I kept hearing about that, that, you know, they're holding a light or they're here to change the earth. Or whatever. What well, they're, can acting, you share? Mm -hmm. they're, they're acting as anchor points of the great central sun, the high gamma ray frequencies that are coming via our sun uh, by that are stemming or generating from the central core of a galaxy coming in via our sun into our planet is um, giving us a new frequency of reality known as the fourth and fifth and sixth dimensional levels of reality. And so the star seeds are the anchor points of that. They are the ones that are holding the frequency for the collective in order to shift shift the entire planet into um are you there into the new yeah. you know, the new world age or the age of aquarius and so um we are the helpers you know we are the ones that decided to come and be the anchor points in order to restore the earth back to her original glory as it was before it fell into densities or dimension mm -hmm. so what are you here to do what what why are you born here because you 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 said you're not from here Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'm here to uh, assist in the ascension of the planet and bring forth awareness for to the collective, and that's the reason why I, I wrote my book was to kind of uh, also awaken the star seeds uh, as a reminder to their mission, and also as a way to trigger them in, in a sense where they remember why they came to this earth as as way showers, as beacons of light for the rest of the human collective. So you mentioned about star seeds. Mm -hmm. What are the star seeds? I mean, I know I understand some of this stuff that you talk about, but for the listeners, I would like to sure. for you to share with that. How do they know if they're star seeds and what are they supposed to do? Yeah, star seeds are, are souls that have already completed the ascension process. They're coming from the seventh, eighth, ninth, 10, 11, and 12, and some are even coming from the 13th dimension. And their purpose is to um to help um bring the earth back into um, her proper place in the galactic community because the earth was uh, unfortunately taken over during the times of Atlantis by the fallen ones or what we call the regressive aliens, you know, um, that uh, infiltrated us and kind of took over the affairs for the earth. But they, they, the higher ups knew that uh, their time was limited. And so now at the ending, now that we're ending the great cycle, they know that their time is up. And so the star seeds are here to, uh, win the final victory against darkness and usher in the, the age of light or the golden era. <laughs> oh, the great age of Aquarius. A lot of people are talking about that too, the same thing, correct? So correct, yeah. this, this group of aliens you were talking about just now, who are they? Well, the, the name of the regressives that took over Atlantis were known as the Draco reptilians. Mm -hmm. um, and the Draco reptilians um, have been the 
the reason why there's been so much chaos and and, and wars throughout our galaxy, not only in our Milky Way galaxy, but in other galaxies. Mm -hmm. And so they're also considered the fallen angels, the children of Lucifer. So what we have here is we have two types of ETs. We have the galactic humans, which I reveal in my book, which stem from the lineage of Michael and Lyra. And angel, then we also angel have Michael. Mm -hmm. Angel Michael. And then we also have the um, Draco reptilians, Hydra reptilians, and Siakar reptilians who stem from the lineage of Lucifer. So throughout the, the history of the universe, our local universe, the battle has been against the children of Lucifer in the form of the Draco reptilians, yes. Wow, wow, wow. So you mentioned that uh, this is the, the, the timing of ending of this, this group that's been on this earth for a long, long time and create a lot of chaos. That's what I just kind of questioned the listener from the beginning, you know, what's going to happen to the earth here with all this chaos. It has been a lot of chaos for a long time now. Yes. The earth is going to be purged upon the solar flash, the great solar flash mm -hmm. that has also been predicted. And so the forces of darkness were actually uh, pinned. They were pinned down here in our solar system long ago by the Galactic Federation because mm -hmm. they knew that at the end of the cycle, uh, upon the solar flash, that they would be destroyed. And so that's what we're, we're going to be witnessing any day now. Okay. So any day now, give us a time frame. Are we supposed to be seeing this? Is this, are we seeing this just, just like the beings going to be here or they already existed within the human form? It, it's it's going to be a spiritual mental and physical event yes it's first going to it's already happening in the spiritual realm and in the mental realm many of us are already uh ascended into the fifth dimensional reality but we haven't taken our bodies yet because we're waiting for that final release of the sun to transform our dna and activate the dormant dna so that we could become upgraded so as i speak at the cellular level, we're all becoming upgraded right now. But there's going to be different levels of upgrades. Not everybody's going to be at the same level of power. For the majority, which is 90% of the population who are the, the newbies or the earth souls that are new, uh, younger souls, um, they're going to be um, using about five to six strands of DNA. Um, but they're also going to live for a few hundred years. And then they're going to, because we're going to have free energy technologies and cures for everything. They're going to be able to live a life without any illnesses, without any diseases, um, and, you know, be part of a golden age. Now the next level, uh, or the next stage of, of, uh, upgrades is going to be with the star seeds. The star seeds are going to be able to use 12 strands of DNA, which is going to give them access to supernatural powers. You know, some are going to be telekine telekinetic, some are going to be telepathic, um, similar to the X-Men, <laughs> among other, you know, spiritual powers. And then there's going to be another level beyond them, um, where these, the core of the star seeds, who are the most advanced souls in the multiverse, are going to be like, very powerful, they're going to have all the powers you could think of. And those are the people that are going to be uh, in charge, not only of the new earth, but of the new universe, the new cosmos to come from this earth. So it's all being prepared for that. Wow. Everything's developing, yeah. So you talk, you mentioned earlier about 12 strands. That's what we came in with. And, yes, originally and, we had And now we all know the seven, seven strand of six, seven strand of DNA chakras. That's the same thing, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So we lost yeah. that and now, now it's coming back. And, and when, what's the timeline? How many years from now that you see this is going to be happening, changing to the humankind? Between now, between now and 2024, so within less than two years, we're going to be able to witness this, this shift, this radical change that's going to change everything. Wow, wow, wow. This is actually exciting to hear this. So I, I, know, I know that I met you at the conference and then mm -hmm. someone asked you about if the aliens are going to show up. Because I know a lot of talk about that. When are they going to show up? Be between now and 2024, they already made arrangements to uh, de um, to work on first contact. In fact, um, that's already happening from behind the scenes. There's uh, within the um, highest levels of government, we've already made first contact in the 1950s. So because uh, these certain breakaway groups within our government who have also developed the alien tech um, have, you know, are secretly have secretly gone out to, to the galaxy to establish bases and stations. And they, um, 
in a way have already contacted or made contact with the Galactic Federation. So for the last 70 years, the Galactic Federation and the uh, Earth Alliance has been working in secret and they've just been waiting for the collective uh, of the collective mind of humanity to reach a level of understanding where everyone will be ready to understand that we are not alone in the universe. And so that time is now, you know, they're, they're waiting for that critical mass shift. And because there's an acceleration of consciousness on the planet that is taking place right now, it's going to hit a critical point where um, like the Maharishi effect, it's going to cause an entire shift of everybody to, to be ready and to really understand, you know, that, that uh, what it's like to be part of a galactic community. So that's going to be happening any day now. Oh, well, when you talk about government, which government is it? Is it United States government? Uh, the major because it seems like a mess world. right now with the other yeah. governments. Yeah, we, well, you know, the visible governments are just surface governments. You know, there's um, various levels beyond the, the visible government uh, that go into the secret government of the secret societies that have actually already made contact with uh, several ET groups. So you have the dark, um, the Luciferian branch known as the Cabal, um, and their, their superiors have been the Draco Reptilians. And they received the technology by the Draco in the 1950s. And then we also have the uh, White Hats, the White Hats who are, who are, you know, fighting the Cabal. And the White Hats also received alien technology by the Galactic Federation in the 1960s in order to counteract um, the other alliances that took place between, you know, the Cabal and the Draco. So the technology is already in place. You know, we have everything, every cure. We have med beds. We have zero point gravity energy. We have replicators. We have portal time travel. All that stuff we have within the private sector. So upon the ascension and upon first contact, all that technology will be released to the to the um, to the Earthlings. Oh wow! <laughs> well, let's say people who have illness right now, because you mentioned about no illness with all this technology, and people. There's a lot of people with illness right now, right? Especially with the COVID. You know, uh, we mm -hmm. have this in the past couple of years. You said that this technology will be able to reverse all this illness on absolutely human cure every anything at will. Yes. Wow. So this is this is gonna destroy all the insurance company and all. <laughs> Well, the insurance right? companies and the pharmaceutical cartel and the American uh, Medical Association are all part of the cabal run structured. So all that is coming to an end. I, I believe that too. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not about helping people at all. Wow. So how would one know, Ismail, that, um, I mean, what, what, what do people need to do right now in order pre to prepare for this ascension or for these changes? Because the idea for most people to think or to hear that the aliens gonna be here in 2000, by 2014, for some people it's exciting to, to mm -hmm. even witness that. But for many, because a lot of people don't believe in, in the existence of outer world, you know, outer universe and outer existence. Many human may be kind of scared. Is it what could happen in this? coming years that you, you mentioned? Yes. Um, well, when disclosure takes place, there's going to be different levels of disclosure. The first level of disclosure is going to be revealing the crimes against humanity um, done so by the cabal. And then the second level of disclosure will be dealing with releasing the advanced interstellar technology to the rest of the human population by the Earth Alliance or, um, and the Galactic Federation. And then the third level of disclosure is first contact. Well, I guess those two go together. I'm sorry. Yeah. But the third level of, of disclosure is also teaching and releasing the information about the galactic history, about our true origin, that we were seated here uh, by many extraterrestrial races, which is totally going to obliterate organized religion and the scientific community. It's all going to be done with when all this comes to light. And so for many people who are not ready for this type of information, uh, there will be some sort of cognitive dissonance in a sense where they're going to be a little shocked, but then their body... Um, then they're going to be able to understand, you know, that's why all this corresponds with the great solar flash, because the great solar flash is also going to act as a trigger for people to, um, to be aware and, and really raise their consciousness to the level that, hey, you know, everything we've been taught is wrong. And, and you know, we're, we're now seeing things for what they really are. 
So it's all going to happen at the same time. So it's going to be a it's going to be a huge quantum leap when this no. all happens. God, I mean, this is going to be fascinating. To me, it's fascinating. You know, to a lot of people, I mean, listen to this. You're going to be quite open minded. I think it's kind of same thing. You know, like and it's been about 20 years ago when I heard about conspiracy theory. And I was like, hell no way. I go, this is crazy. And David Icke was the first person that I bought the book and read about his stuff. And he talks about reptilian. He talks about all this. Um, one of them I remember clearly was about, what's his name, Epstein that has island, you know? Yes. And years mm -hmm. ago, I was like, no way, you know? <laughs> but I was yeah. open-minded enough to kind of continuously listen to whatever that comes into my way. I have people that show me, I never said no. And this is the reason I'm sharing this guy is because when we're listening to things like this, as it's to SML talking, be open-minded because we need to become aware whether or not you believe in this stuff, be open-minded. Because like right now, you know, a few years ago when I heard about Epstein that got in jail, you know, because of trafficking, I said, I said to my friend, he's gonna die in jail. He's gonna get killed. And the day after that, it was on the news. You see? So well, they, because they, I... They actually um, faked his death. He's being protected because they were trying to... Uh, um, they were trying to suppress all the people that were associated with Pedophile Island. And a lot of those people, unfortunately, were big name celebrities and a lot of politicians that we entrusted, you know, like the Clintons, the Obamas, uh, the Bushes. They were all part of that. Yeah, I and, mean... And I, every president... <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, they he mentioned all the names, and mm -hmm. twenty years ago, I was like, no way, you know, impossible. Our government would, and now the list came out, and all this thing. If you listen to the whole thing for so many years, being open minded, you can actually see the whole picture. It's just like you're on top of the mountain, you can look down, and you can see the whole picture now. Like, wow, you know what? This thing can be real now. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah. It's not conspiracy. It's actually true. It, Very it just, true. When you listen to it, it's hard to believe because we were so programmed to think certain way, believe certain way, right? Mm -hmm. And to listen and hear something that's out the norm, it's very hard for a lot of people to really, you know, grasp the idea. So now what will happen when they show up? Would they show up in the space aircraft or just being amongst human form? Well, first, they're going to allow their ships to appear on a mass scale, huge motherships, which are already parked in our atmosphere, um, waiting for the solar flash to destroy the veil and allow people's consciousness to be raised to the fourth and fifth dimension level of reality. So once the people's consciousness are in the fourth and fifth dimension level of reality, then that's when people are going to see the motherships for the first time. Wow. And when they see the motherships, people are going to feel a sense of warmness because they're going to realize that those motherships have always been here protecting and guiding the evolutionary progress of, of humanity from behind the scenes. Wow. Can you share with the listener what the fourth and fifth dimension is and what we're supposed to feel sure. seeing in that you know, section of that dimension? Okay, so the current dimension that we're in, known as the third dimension, this is the most hardest dimension to experience, the densest, where everything is separated, everything seems to be solid. And it's also the dimension where the opposites are constantly at odds, odds, polarity, duality, you know. So the fourth dimension is bringing the opposites back into balance. It is the dimension of love, because it also corresponds to the heart chakra. Um, and so the fifth dimension is the unity consciousness. So once one once realizes that everything is is one interconnected and we live in a interconnected ecosystem and cosmos, then people begin to realize that we're all part of a bigger organism. And that is called unity consciousness or Christ consciousness. And that is the fifth dimension. And then in the sixth dimension, after we've realized that everything is one and we're all interconnected through this energy field known as the field or the unified field, then people begin to realize that they're all different aspects of the one singular consciousness. So they begin to become part of a unimind. And according to the raw material, that unimind is also known as a social memory complex. So at the six dimensional level of reality, we become a collective while maintaining our individual awareness. Oh, wow. Wow. This is like mind blowing. <laughs> so let's say, you know, um, 
you know, I have, when I was young, I was always wondering where we're from, you know, where do we come from and what's the purpose of our life? This is when I was a little girl. And at this point in my life, I start seeing my parents gone from me and even some people, you know, especially with the COVID, I almost died myself almost a couple of years ago. And I thought about death, you know, what would happen when human person pass on into a different place? Do we go back into where we're from? Is that what it is? Are, do you know anything about that, Isabel? It's just a transition into a different dimension. That's all death is. Yeah, because we had to die in the higher dimensions in order to reincarnate in, the, in this third dimension, in the slow dimension. So mm -hmm. as we ascend, um, if, if, we, if we don't make the ascension, like say if somebody dies before the solar flash, before the, the you know, shift in, into the fourth and fifth and sixth dimensional level of reality, then all they do is they just reincarnate depending on if whether they learned all their lessons in the third dimension or yeah. whether they didn't. Because if they didn't, then they're going to have to reincarnate in another Earth-like planet that is still undergoing a third dimensional reality in order to continue learning the, mess, the um, lessons. And then once, but if they mastered the third dimension, if they learn their lessons, then they go up to the fourth dimension, and then they learn how to master the fourth dimension to eventually go to the fifth dimension. So that's how it works. It's it, there's no death, because um, these are just avatars. You know, we're dealing with an eternal spirit, right? That is just ex gaining um, experience through the various incarnations. So you mentioned that humans going to be living a lot longer, over a hundred years. Yes, at least ninety percent of the population. Yes, and when but is the that? Seeds are going to be living for thousands of years. They're going to appear to be immortals to the you know the, the the majority of the humans after the ascension. That's interesting when you say that because you know part of the Bibles you know they talk about some of these prophets live up to like five hundred years, a thousand years, and I said, well, if they can live up to that long, what happened now? Most people die less than a hundred years old. So are we kind of going back? into that um yes we are we're gonna go back to how it was during ancient times where we had mortals we had demigods wizards or you know part mortal part immortal and then we're gonna have like immortals <laughs> wow so the the origin of the the earth is the studying them from lumeris and atlantis time or egyptian well, time? i think those are all about the same existence right well, that, that, that was the um, the earth in its original uh, fifth dimensional state of reality. Yes, it existed as Tara. It was known as Tara before it became earth. But even before Tara, the earth was once in the eighth dimension and it was known as Gaia. And even before that, it once existed in the 12th dimension and it was known as Aramatina. But its, its original... Its origin began in the central universe of Hevana, which is the eternal spheres, where the earth was um, known as Sophia. The original Earth began in the uh, realms of eternity, which was then known as Sophia. It was a 50-dimensional, all-eternal paradise. And then from the original state of pure consciousness, Sophia, in order to experience more of itself, became the you know 12-dimensional Earth known as Aramatina. And then through further descending, or what I call in my book, the involutionary process of spirit descending into matter or becoming more denser, it gradually descended into the eighth dimension, becoming Gaia, and then it, and then it fell into the fifth dimension, becoming Tara, and then finally it's it's Earth as we know it in the third dimension. But now it's bouncing back up. Now we're entering the uh, Tara Earth, which occupies dimensions four, five, and six. So upon the ascension, there's going to be um, four different levels of reality: fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions coexisting all at the same time. Oh God, this is, this is like, I mean, for a lot of people, it's quite complex, I'm sure, you know, this is, but fascinating at the same time, Ismail. And, you. Uh, you know, I'm going to ask you, what would you advise people to do right now, you know, uh, to be prepared for this ascension or prepare for all these change, big changes of, you know, the aliens coming here, the good aliens, right? I would assume right, the good course, aliens. Yes. Those are you helping humanity. What would you recommend advise people to do? Well, one of them I know pick up your book. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> pick up his book and read about it because that's a lot. You know, you can only really talk so much on this talk show, right? The Our Cosmic Origin by Ismail Perez on Amazon.com. I probably did pick up mine, but 
anyway, uh, but there's so much that he talks about and some people are probably gonna scratch your head and like, what is that, right? But if you wanna know more about it, please pick up the book and read about it. And like back to the question, what would you suggest people to do to prepare for this right now? Go within, mm -hmm. be centered and grounded. Um, and also try to practice a state of mindfulness and just be, be aware of things, observe things. And also don't partake of the, of the, um, of the negative timeline or, or of the negative, you know, a uh, propaganda that is going around with uh, scare, um, fear tactics and, you know, false information. Um, many people are preaching doomsday and stuff, you know, that's not going to happen maybe in their reality, but not in our reality, because they, there will be a bi bifurcation of timelines. So those that are ascending in the positive timeline will, will no longer experience any, uh, suffering death or anything, you know, they're going to be, um, experiencing a new heaven on earth as revealed in my book <laughs> amen so, <laughs> new heaven on earth i love that and you know i just want to add into that you know if you wanted to be ready into this new world new life new experience and live longer takes care of your health takes care of your body takes care of your mind it's all important it's about my body and soul all right oh, perfect yeah yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, <laughs> take care of your health. Especially right now, go work out, you know, connect with yourself. Like what Ismail, you know, mentioned, brought it up. It's very helpful information. And wow, with that said, Ismail, we're just coming to a conclusion of this talk. And I, I mean, there's so much that you can share. I would love to invite you back again and share some more stuff. I got sure, your sure. book already. I just kind of have to read more about it. It's sure, maybe next time. Maybe next time I could uh, talk about the galactic history of the galactic wars that were fought millions of years in our galaxy. Oh, my God. Yes, please, please, please. So I'm going to bring him back, guys. All right. Because you're going to be, you know, I may even do live so people to, uh, come in and ask, I mean, ask questions about mm -hmm. all that as well. Sounds good. Yeah. But all that information and more is revealed in our cosmic origin. So if you guys want to understand the next level disclosure, beyond you know government et treatises and advanced alien technology i would suggest ordering my book so that you could have a a higher level understanding of of our origin in the cosmos and earth's relationship to the multiverse if, no look i'm going to share on my uh desktop here i only want to open up this um amazon.com and show your book see this guy can you see it yes I can. there see you it. go so, <laughs> thank you appreciate yeah, that yeah uh, that's why i order my i order kindle so you know <laughs> our cosmic origin by ismail perez and you can order in the paperback or kindle all right guys so this is it as easy as that because his book you can just get so much information and he's going to come back again share all this amazing stuff to everyone so thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you ismail for being here and sharing with us this fascinating information because this is such a powerful powerful information that you share and it's fascinating thank you thank so you. much i appreciate you having me here thank you so much i appreciate you very much being here thank you you're welcome you have a good one you too thank you bye, -bye. <laughs>